Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Monday's Morning Prayers. My name is Leslie, and I'm a member of the St Peter's Congregation. This week, Morning Prayers and the Sunday service is go are going to be um, recorded and delivered by the Monday evening Zoom Bible study group and the small team of us at, from church who organise the Christian Aid Week activities because this is Christian Aid Week. Many members of the two groups have worked together to do morning prayers and the next week's Sunday service. And we particu I'd particularly like to thank Sue, Judy, Jackie, Paul, Sarah and John and Alex for helping us with the IT. All of this week's prayers are based on this booklet. This is the Christian Aid Week seven day devotional. It's released every year to help Christian Aid Week supporters understand more about their work, but particularly to help us pray and learn more about particular topics um, and areas of the world. Copies of the devotional leaflet were handed out at the Sunday service yesterday, so you may have picked one up. Any spare copies have been placed in a plastic bag by the St Peter door at church. So if you're passing and would like to pick one up, please do. In addition, we have been using materials and readings and prayers from this book. This is Ruth Valerio's book, Saying Yes to Life, which was the Archbishop of Canterbury's um, Lent book for last year. Things have come together for us really well because both the Lent book and the devotional leaflet focus on Genesis 1. So that's where we're starting today and that thread will follow through this week of prayers and our Sunday service. But before we start, let's have a prayer. God of all creation, we come, together or apart, longing to meet with you, to be refreshed and restored by the spring of living water, by you, the source of all life. In your mercy, meet with us here. Amen. And now a short Bible, a short reading from the Psalms. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. This year, Christian aid is focusing on God's creation and on the effects of climate, the climate crisis on communities in Kenya. Over the week, Florence and Rose will be sharing their stories. They're Christians from a church in East Kenya. They will tell us how severe changes in the climate have affected their daily lives and how their faith and partnership with their church and a Christian organisation and Christian aid have helped them not only to survive but to flourish. So with all this in mind, let's start with our first reading. Sarah is going to read from us from Genesis 1 verse 1 through to Genesis 2 verse 3. When she's finished that reading, she will just reread to us the verses that we're going to focus on today. And that is Genesis 1 verses 3 to 5. Thank you, Sarah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and then there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse 
and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees, on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed, according to their kinds, and trees bared fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky, to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons, and days, and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing with which the waters teem, according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds livestock creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves along the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it. I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day 
and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Genesis 1, verses 3 to 8. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters, to separate water from the water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. Thank you, Sarah. These opening words of the Bible set the scene for all that is to come. It tells us about God's character, and his relationship with his creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All that was, all that is, all that will be. All this comes from God. Right from the very beginning of the Bible, it speaks of a God who is not passive or distance, distant, but is active and involved. The opening chapter goes on to describe the scale, the diversity, the goodness of God's creation. But here it is simply enough to reflect on the one who is the creator. Today's focus is on day one. We consider darkness and light, day and night, the rhythm of life and the wonder and beauty of creation. This is the story of the beginning of light and darkness both essential for all that is that comes next day and night sunrise and sunset the pattern of our days essential for the subsequent growth of plants and for the activity and rest of god's creatures and now carrying on with our theme of creation and creativity we'll listen to a worship song written and performed by dave a member of our church worship team the video includes beautiful images of God's creation taken by John. What incredible God-given creativity we have in our congregation. Thank you, Dave. Let's 
very much Dave and John for that beautiful video. I hope you felt able to join in their thanksgiving for God's creation. And now I want you to hear Florence's story. This is the story of how climate change is affecting one community in the Kitu province of eastern Kenya. It's a story of how changes in weather and climate are affecting people in a community where eight out of ten people are reliant on crops, um, their, their own crops for their daily food and also for their income, selling maize and beans, but also um, for their livestock, for their sheep, cows and goats. In recent times, um, the, war, the rain has become much more unreliable and there have been long periods of drought where people have had to walk many miles to collect water and for certain these have been followed by torrential rain and flooding where the crops that have been growing um, have been destroyed or damaged. So now we'll go over and listen to Florence's story, um, a story of changes in God's creation, but also how Christians have come together to address um, the issues that they face. Over to Florence now. Come, sit on the Florence, born and born. The end of that, the end of Queena, with the with the running in the wrong one. We put two and a half inches of snow. We put one and a half inches of snow. We put one and a half inches of snow. We put one and a half inches I mean, I I can do a ban in your car, see, maybe to me to wear where they never let an in your car go. See, do my down, I don't want to go to where I can go, go, was it to put Kwasa? Kalibu, 
Ni ndio matungi ya mvea kiasi wanga hii ameke nesa angiasia pawe mbesu sina unye wanga hii ongelele bo We've covered a lot this morning already. Um, and this is day one of five days of morning prayer on the theme of creation and climate change. The Bible reading has told us that God created the world, first the night and the day. Out of nothing and through his immense goodness and power, he created our world, blessed it and saw that it was good. Florence's story of faith has shown us that although our lives may be ones of hardship and pain at times, when we are faced with difficult situations through prayer, working together with other Christians, hard work and with a joyful attitude, much can be achieved. Humans are enormously creative, but we also have the power to damage and destroy. So now we are going to turn to our prayers. First, I will lead us with a confession, followed by a collect, and then the Christian aid prayer for today from the devotional. After that, there'll be a period of quiet and then our intercessions. So first, a confession. Father God, when we are unkind to people and forget that they are your children, when we are careless with the beasts and forget they are your creation, when we ill-treat the land and forget the splendour of you, O oh God, forgive us, O oh God of love, and reconcile us to yourself, to one another and to the creation. Teach us that the earth and all its fullness is yours, the world and all who dwell in it. Remind us that your son too enjoyed the fruits of the harvest in Galilee and joins us now as we celebrate your good gifts together. Call us again to safeguard the gift of life, now and forever. Amen. and a collect on the theme of creation. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for your gracious providing, may we cherish and respect this planet and all its people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen.
and the prayer from today, day one, from the seven-day devotional. Giver of life, thank you for the light of each day and for your mercy new every morning. Tune us into the rhythm of your will, renewing, restoring and releasing creation so that we may be co-creators with you. Amen. We come to, now to our time of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, maker and sustainer of all that we see around us, you created this wonderful world with its beauty and frailties. With your strength and power, you created it. Thank you for the highest mountains and the smallest insect. Thank you for the grains of sand and the stars at night. It is too much sometimes for us to understand and comprehend the length and breadth, the size of your creation. However, Lord, we are so aware that we as humans are part of the cause of the destruction of your world. Our greed, our consumerism, our use of fossil fuels has brought about the destruction of part of your world. And that destruction has damaged our brothers and sisters. It damages us. It could potentially damage the lives of our children and their children. As we balance and hold the tension of the beauty of your creation and the evil and sins that we have done to bring about part of its destruction, be with us so that we may see things afresh with your eyes. Guide us this week, Christian Aid Week, as we explore these topics further. Be with us, we pray, in this. Amen. We go on to pray for governments, international organisations, local organisations, individuals who care for your world and want to bring about changes. We pray that you will guide Christian aid that you will guide our governments. You will guide all those who meet at the COP26 conference later this year in Glasgow. Help them to act wisely, help us to act wisely. To be awestruck by your creation, but to be careful and caring in all that we do. In these COVID times, we bring to you the many, many people who have been affected by this pandemic. We pray particularly for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are ill and suffering the long-term effects of the illness. We pray particularly for countries where COVID case rates are high and at this time we particularly play, pray for India and Brazil, countries where case numbers are high and the healthcare system is in many places overwhelmed by the demand. Be with those who care for others, guide the leaders, we seek your good in this situation. Heavenly Father, we bring the COVID situation and those suffering to you. Amen. We pray next for the people known to us who are unwell at the moment. We bring to you particularly everyone mentioned in the weekly catch. 
We'll take a piece at the time of quiet now, just to remember particular people who may be known to us. And we particularly also bring to you Lord Garth, who's recovering from his operation. Be his strength at this time. Give him patience in his recovery. And we pray for healing in your time, Lord, that he will come back to our congregation. Amen. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. During this week, when we look at you as a creator, but also at climate change and the damage done to our beautiful world, we pray that you may touch our hearts, not only with the beauty of what we see around us, but also with promptings from you about what we might be able to do to care better for this, for our environment. Inspire us in you. May the beauty of what we see trigger ideas in us of how we can better care for what you have so kindly given us. Guide us all as we go through this Christian Aid Week to examine the damage that we may have done and help us to resolve to be better stewards of all that you have given us. We pray all this, Heavenly Father, through Jesus' name, who was with you at the creation of the world and is with us each day as we pray to you. Heavenly Father, in your name we pray. Amen. We will now close our intercessions by saying the Lord's Prayer together with Sarah. Our Father, who art in heaven. You are also at home in the air, soil, forests and oceans. Hallowed be your name. By the care we take of your creation. Your kingdom come. All that you see is good. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Your will to till and care. Give us this day our daily bread that all may have sufficient to live life in fullness. Forgive us for our trespasses, our greed, our exploitation, our lack of concern for other species and for future generations. As we forgive those who trespass against us. By reconciliation with justice and peace. Lead us not into temptation. The temptation to equate dominion with exploitation. And deliver us from evil. The evil of destroying your gift of creation. For yours is the kingdom. Yours, Lord, not ours. The power and the glory. In the cross and resurrection. Forever and ever. You are the beginning and you are the end. Amen. So be it. Now, a final thought and a closing prayer. Dave's song said, Signs of your glory are there for all to see. And I'm wondering if today, after our reading and the video from um, Kenya, you might want to go and look for signs of God's glory around you. You might want to reconnect anew with God's marvellous creation. You might want to just sit outside and... Look in your garden at the trees and the birds. If you're able, you might want to go for a walk. You might want to go out after dark and just marvel at the stars and the moon and the sky, or just linger over a sunset or a sunrise. For me, over the last year or so since lockdown, I've become fascinated by bees got my bee identification chart because the person that we bought our house from had a very bee friendly garden and last summer we had spring and summer we had so many bees come and I was just fascinated by 
these beautiful creatures, very different, but all so busy and just an essential part of God's creation. So see if you can reconnect to the beauty of God's creation today. And our final sending out prayer. God of wonder, go with us into this new day. Speak to us, refresh us, astound us, that we may grow to love you and your world more deeply. Through the love and power of Jesus, who was with you from the beginning of creation. Amen. If you're able, join us tomorrow when Judy will be looking at the water, the sky and the land. Goodbye.